How many of you have fallen in love in your life? Please raise your hands. Oh, quite many. <laughs> Let me show you the future of love. So the chat that you see on the screen, it's actually a chat between a teenage boy and a girl where the, they're having all those initial lovebird conversation, you know, okay, what do you like about me? How do you feel about me? And this teenage boy, instead of expressing his true feeling about the girl, he goes to this AI tool and tries to find a best possible answer. And types it back to the girl, and the girl is already going, wow. Now, do you think the girl is falling for the boy or she is falling for this AI tool? Yeah. <laughs> and what is the future of this relationship? Yeah. This... <laughs> so this made me realize where are we moving towards when it comes to that human bond and that relationship. I'm not here to say that AI can do everything, but definitely there are things which AI can do. Let's say relationship, for example. Do you know that there are so many AI tools which can actually go through the browsing history of your loved ones and give an idea for a perfect gift? It's just like having your own TED from that movie, How I Met Your Mother, who never falls short of a perfect gift idea. Another thing is that communication. I know many of you must have used Google Translator or Microsoft Binge. And this is nothing but an AI tool which actually helps to translate language. And definitely when you talk to anyone in their local language, the kind of bond that you create, the relationship is for lifelong. When it comes to wealth, let me talk to you about the story of Aladdin. Now when I say Aladdin, I'm not talking about that Arabian night story where he had the genie and then you brush the genie. And boom, a genie appears and says, Jo hukam mere aka. I'm talking about Black Rock's Aladdin. And it's a fantastic idea of a merger of AI and machine learning. And it, that's how it has leveraged the technology to bring a big transformation in financial services industry. And these days, all these financial advisors, they are using this tool to manage risk and funds effectively. Also, when it comes to having our financial security or keeping our funds safe, there are so many AI tools which is working in background and keeping our money safe against all kind of financial frauds. Now, when I come tell about health, I think AI is a part of our life. And most of us must be using some or the other smartwatch or smart app who take care of anything and everything about us. May it be our sleep pattern, the number of how much water we drank, how much steps did we walk. It is just like, you know, having a 24-hour caregiver, just like we had in that movie, I Am Mother. Have you heard about Google DeepMind? So what it has done, it has actually leveraged the AI images to identify diabetic retinopathy, which is a very rare cause of blindness and the level of accuracy was much higher than that of an ophthalmologist. Now, I can go on and on here, but there are things certainly AI cannot do. I still remember that horrific, dark night of my life. I was so scared of everything. For the initial few hours, I was so lost in my own thought of the big decision that I have taken in my life and I had no clue what future has in store for me. Before I tell you how I landed in that railway station of Dadar and what happened next, let me take you back to my childhood days. I come from a beautiful city of Raurkela, from a Bihari family. My father owned a small grocery shop and I remember one day while I was accompanying him in his regular collection round, there was an uncle and he expressed an utter surprise when he got to know that I go to an English medium school. He told my dad, that what is the English medium in the girl in the English medium? He said, what is the point of sending a girl Meaning, what is the point of sending a girl child to an English medium school? Because at the end, she has to get married and take care of someone's family. Now to this, what my dad responded, it still stuck with me. He told whatever happens to her is her kismat. 
fate. But he will make sure he do the best for his kids. Ever since then, he has always, always been my biggest support. I know he's not there anymore, but he's still watching my back. I was growing fast in my career and I was good in studies. I remember during the initial days of my career, I grabbed an amazing opportunity to spend one full day with none other than the business tycoon Anil Agarwal. Life was going good, I was growing fast in my career until a sudden pause changed everything. I got married, I have to leave my job, I have to change city. For some reason, my marriage did not work. And one fine day, I finally decided to step out of the marriage against everyone in my family. And that's how I landed in this railway station of Dadar. I was completely lost and shattered in my life. I remember I spent two nights in that railway station of Dadar. I was homeless, hopeless, extremely humiliated and hopeless. I had no clue what future had in store for me. And I still remember those harsh words which everyone told about me. With the little bit savings that I had, I somehow managed to find a chawl in Mumbai. And I remember it was a one room kitchen setup with four people staying already there. My next big challenge was to find a job because I didn't have that relevant experience for that city of Mumbai. When I started thinking of giving a job, I remember I didn't have even proper clothes to go and give an interview. I borrowed clothes from my roommate, top from someone, legging from someone because I didn't have that money as well. And started giving interviews till I found my first job of just 6,500 and that was a world for me. Walking five to six kilometers every day from my chawl to the work, I saved on transportation. There was days where I have to survive on that meager budget of 30 rupees by feeding on some banana or vada pav or just water. I remember days were hard, nights were even harder. And there were sleepless nights where suicidal thought actually haunted me. There was a day when I actually gave up and wanted to commit suicide by consuming phenyl, which I did. But luckily, the, I had a roommate, she found me in that bad state. She rushed me to the hospital and I survived. Days just passed and I remember there was a day when I was just walking from my work and there was a random flyer which was handed over to me and that wrote happiness. And I was desperate for change and looking for happiness in that point of my life. And so I decided to attend that session, more so because it was a free session. I felt that glimmer of hope being there. So I decided to do the three-day happiness course, which obviously demanded some money. I arranged the money from somewhere. And that brought a transformation in my life. So today, if I stand in front of all of you delivering my TEDx talk, it's maybe because destiny had some other plans for me. Despite so many challenges, I preserved. My journey from despair to hope, it's a testimony of human spirit resilience that no matter how hard life gets, there is always, always a glimmer of light or hope waiting to pull you forward. Today, when I stand and talk in front of all of you, it also makes me think that if AI was there back then, would all the struggle, challenges that I have gone through, that mental trauma, loneliness, financial crisis, would all this would have been easier for me to handle if AI was there? Or if AI was there, it would have helped me to wipe the tears from my face. And when I think about all these different aspects, the only answer that I get is a big no. So we don't have to worry that a human terminator is going to come one day and terminate us all. Because understand, AI is just a tool designed by people like you and me. 
and for sure there are limitations and the biggest limitation is that human emotion that compassion that empathy which only humans can have challenges struggle is a part of everyone's life so just like we have programmed ai we have to also learn to program ourselves now with my own life challenges life lessons i have come up with a very simple solution and i name it as dna now the reason i have named it as dna because i believe that each one of us is unique and so is our dna and it is this dna that imbibes that force that drive to pull us forward against all odds in our life now what does this dna stands for the d first one it stands for decision so when i say decision we all has to have that point in our life where we have to take a decision and remember there is nothing as right decision or wrong decision i have always gone by the thought from mr ratan tata where he says i don't believe in making a right decision i make a decision and then make it right when i look back in my own life all the decisions or i'll say all the major decisions that i have taken in my life was driven by this may it be taking the decision of just stepping out of the house with no clue where am i going to go what am i going to do or career job or changing different career or even aspiring to do something new with no knowledge and skill and every time it was just driven by something which i'll say the gut feeling or something inside me said this is the right thing to do and again it's not just about taking the decision it's also about giving that 100% of action to make sure you make your decision right because decision drives action and action drives growth the next n it stands for navigation so when i say navigation it is actually moving from one point to the other but the most important thing is keep moving there are people i know they have great ideas fantastic way of doing things but they also have something called fear or doubt or maybe waiting to be perfect i say that these people are in the parking lot they are not moving i am a person who never makes a long term plan i make those small small goals maybe a six months goals or three months goal and i i work hard to make sure i achieve those goals and each time i achieve those goals trust me it gives me so much of happiness and also that drive to work on my next goal because for me it's all about taking that one small step at a time that one small step at a time do imperfect doesn't matter because it's all about the progress not the perfection and last the most important point is that acceptance because we cannot change our past nor we can change anyone else only thing we can change is ourselves there was a time of my life where i was struggling to accept myself my reality my relationship status the way i look the way i talk am i good enough to talk in that forum there were a lot of inferiority complex that i had on myself so i was kind of in that hibernation mode i was comparing myself with everyone but as the journey of transformation began there was a day where i actually started accepting myself the way i am and i started loving myself and when that happened trust me the world open up for me everyone started loving me fast forward today when i look back and think about those days it actually brings tears as well as smile on my face today i am in a position where i am stronger wiser wealthier and happier i work as a global leader in a multinational company managing projects of millions of dollar i have worked in 10 different countries i have lived the dream life of having breakfast in paris lunch in london dinner in amsterdam i have traveled in 23 countries so far <laughs> for my vacation and it's not just the materialistic thing i have also grown as a person because i believe giving back is the best way to express gratitude because i know how it feels when you need someone and someone extends that hand of help and that is something which drives me these days to give as much as possible because when you give back you get back tenfold and that's i have something that i have lived with 
So I will not say that I am that Neo from that movie Matrix or some superwoman powered by AI, but definitely this reminds me of that flight which I took and that was for the first time I flew business class and that was from Mumbai to Dubai. And as the flight took off and I see outside the window, I see the chawls of Mumbai. It was a very emotional moment for me because it took me to the flashback of losing the track of my life in that city of Mumbai and today flying business class from the same city of Mumbai. It was a reconfirmation that my roots are still grounded but now I have wings to fly and achieve greater heights. It was a reconfirmation that where I have come from and where am I today and that was a breathtaking moment of my life. Definitely the future of AI is great and we all have to make the maximum benefit out of it for each other's benefit. But AI cannot imbibe this DNA in us. It can guide us for sure, but that action has to be taken by no one but us. There is this poem from Mr. Amitabh Bachchan which also drive, which always drives me and it goes, Tu khud ki khoj be nikal, tu kis liye hatash hai, tu chal, tere vajood ki samay ko bhi talash hai. Jo tujh se lipti bediyan, samaj na inko vastra tu. Jo tujh se lipti bediyan, samaj na inko vastra tu, ye bediyan pighal ke bana de inko sastra tu. बना दे इनको शस्त्र तू तू खुद की खोज में निकल तू किस लिए हताश है तू चल तेरे वजूद की समय को भी तलाश है समय को भी तलाश है थैंक यू